Welcome back to Rockstock Channel. It is Friday, April 5th at 11 a.m. Over the past two years, Lithium Rush, the RK Equity scoreboard has grown from some 50 companies to over 150. It's been very hard for Rodney and I to keep up with all the new listings in 2022 and 2023. But as the dust settles in Lithium Equity land over the course of 2024, Rodney and I have been spending some time in the first quarter reaching out and getting to know a number of these new stories and picking some we think you might also like to get to know. Next up is Q2 Metals. To be clear, Rodney and I are not strategic advisors to nor invested in Q2 Metals. And of course, we are not financial advisors and nothing in this video should be considered investment advice. Please do your own research and read the disclaimers in this video. Note that a written summary of this interview will be published in the next edition of RK Equities Lithium Ion Bull. Please register your email at rkequity.com if you'd like to receive this newsletter directly to your email box. And please make sure to like this video, subscribe to Rockstock channel, and leave a question or comment below. What do you think of Q2's prospects? What other companies might you be interested to hear from on this channel? As always, I'll begin each Getting to Know You episode with a summary synopsis of some key company attributes. Looking at the RK Equity scoreboard, Q2 Metals trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange, ticker symbol QTWO. Q2 has a market cap of about 29 million Canadian dollars, equivalent to about 21 million US dollars. They have several hard rock exploration projects in the James Bay region of Quebec. Current cash balance is about 10.1 million as of November 30th. Their most recent equity raise was 10.5 million in February 2023 in a non brokered private placement consisting of approximately 7.5 million of flow through financing, 2.7 million in hard dollars. Management owns 8 million shares, totaling about 9% of Q2 stock. Q2 has an active social media presence. You can find them on X at Q2 Metals and also on LinkedIn. And don't forget, you can find Rodney and me on X at Rodney Hooper 13 and at Lithium Ion Bull. And with that, we're going to introduce Alicia Milne, the CEO of Q2 Metals. How are you, Alicia? I'm well. How are you guys? <laughs> Very well. Why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and... Uh, how you became with the background of, of Q2 and, and your involvement with it. And then Rodney will go deeper into uh, project and uh, upcoming milestones. For sure. Um, Q2 has always been a, a mineral exploration company. Um, I think originally it was a CPC that vended in some projects um, back in 2010. Uh, I was appointed to the board in 2018 during a proxy battle. So myself and a uh, fellow director of ours, Leo Power, was also appointed at that point. And um, the company won the proxy battle, but essentially the former management were exhausted, tired, and um, didn't really know which way to proceed with the company. So myself and uh, our CFO, Jody Belfleur, her and I decided to take the company over clean it up and see if we could vend in a new project. Um, in 2021, we consolidated the share capital and then we brought on board a, an associate of ours, Kevin Bottomley, who we've worked with for the past 15, 16 years. And um, between the three of us, we you know, tried to revamp the company and Kevin introduced us to a, a fellow that he knew by the name of Blair Way, who was stuck in Queensland, Australia because of COVID and had a gold project that he was looking to vend into a company to do some work on. So we did that and we vended in the Big Hill Gold Project, which is based out of Queensland. I think it had six historic mines and other workings on it. Um, that got vended in in December 2021. And um, we did a, a short program on that. But given the, the market dynamics at the time, um, and the drill program didn't exactly hit the high grade targets they were looking for. We decided to look for another another project to vend into it. Um, Blair had to leave because his other company, um, the small company named Patriot Battery Metals, was taking off. Mm. So we um, he left, and Simon Cohen, who is a mining engineer based in Australia, he came on board in his place, and um, he was one of the vendors from the Queensland property deal. So we were introduced to a prospector in Quebec by the name of Tony Perron. He has the Canadian Mining House uh, company, I guess you could say. 
And what they do is they, they prospect and they are a project generator. Um, they had a project that they were looking to sell called the Mia project. And we looked at it and, um, thought it was something that was very viable that we could move forward with. We did that deal and that was closed December, 2022, I believe it was, um, knowing that we needed to have a Quebec registered geologist sign off on our disclosure. We reached out to another friend of ours from back in the day, Neil McCallum, who was with DeRouche Geological. And um, he started reading the news release sort of, and really liked Mia. He had, his, he had had his eyes on Mia for a couple of years prior to that and um, wanted to be involved. So he also came on as a director and as our VP of exploration in January, I believe it was. So I think that's our board in a nutshell. Um, there's six of us in total. We're an eclectic group. We all have different backgrounds. We all have different sort of strengths. And uh, I think it works well for us. Like we, we all get along very well. We all have, you know, our ideas of how things should be. And, and you know, we, we meet and we come together and it's, it's, it's very organic and it, and it works well for us. Great. Alicia, if you can, uh, won't you please take us through um, your milestones achieved uh, during last year, during 2023? 2023 was a bit of a, a rebirth of the company, you could say. Um, the EMEA acquisition completed in December 2022. So January 2023, we changed our name to Q2, which was essentially to symbolize Queensland Gold Hills, which was our former name, and Quebec, which is where our new focus was. Um, we had the MIA project, which I just mentioned that it closed. In February 2023, we completed a financing that Howard mentioned $10.25 million, which was a significant financing that we'd undertook. Um, seven and a half million of that is flow through dollars. So that needs to be spent directly into the ground. Uh, no sooner did we get out to the project than um, we got evacuated from the area because it was forest fires. And that essentially lasted the entire summer. So that was our, our whole exploration season. We had two days on Mia, and then we had to leave. We got back there in September, September 1st, and we essentially did two weeks of mapping and sampling at Mia before we had to leave for moose hunting season, and then came back and started drilling. Um, when we we're doing our mapping and sampling, they, they, they confirmed that there was a lot of mineralized zones on the Mia trend itself. And then they also, there's another trend to the north called Bruce Trend and another trend to the south called the Lady Trend, which also in their sampling have indicator elements for what, for what we're looking for. Um, drilling started end of October and we finished that up for winter freeze in mid-December and we drilled approximately 5,000 meters, uh, which then brought us to January. We drilled another 3,500 meters and... Knowing that we we had this potential acquisition with Cisco coming up, we decided to cut our program short and um, and work on Cisco and try to save some firepower for for this year. That's great because that's uh, leads us on perfectly to the next question. So, looking at uh, Cisco, there's some great near surface intercepts that I see there. Um, broadly. It looks as if the transaction sees the vendors um, of all of the, uh, the claims getting a staggered payment of about 60 million shares, about 2.4 in cash, and then a commitment to spend 12 million on, uh, on expiration. Can you just please elaborate on the deal and then perhaps on the timing of, of when those payments happen and so on? But it, it certainly, uh, I did see uh, some very good intercepts there. On, on the um, announcement. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, the Cisco project was something that we we couldn't pass up. As you mentioned, there was a, a great intercept there, hole number five, ended in mineral, mineralization. And, you know, Cumulative had 115 meters at 1.21% Li2O. So, you know, when it, the, the whole deal came through pretty organically, you know, we were looking at other projects to acquire, assuming there might be some sort of consolidation in the area this year, given the, the lithium markets at the end of last year. And uh, Neil had reached out to to Canadian Mining House because they sold us the MIA project to see if they had any projects. And uh, Tony said he had this project that we might be interested in. So 
we flew out, met up with Canadian Mining House, spent the day with them, looked at the core, looked at all the data, and had dinner with them, and just talked to them and got to know them a bit better than we already had. And um, we were definitely eager to do this deal. It's a, the, the project itself is a game changer. And it's close to infrastructure, the actual amount of area that the vendors actually touched and sampled and drilled was essentially a kilometer by one kilometer. So there's so much upside that, um, yeah, I'm going to pass it up. So the terms of the deal, it came through pretty, pretty organically as well. We, we all had essentially the same valuation in mind. Um, it was just a matter of getting to the final point, which was a lot of a lot of heavy lifting on both sides, try to come to, to terms with with what they wanted in shares and cash and, and how we could best structure that. Um, currently, we're in the process of closing the first part of it. So we'll be issuing 20 million shares and the cash component of $1.5 million, which essentially pays them back for the work that they did on the project last year. Um, the next payment will be next year of another 20 million shares plus some cash. And then I think there's two other share components to that in years three and four. Um, there is a discovery bonus if we have a 43101 compliant resource on Cisco and that uh, would give them a one time payment of, I believe it's $2.5 million. If we have a, what is it? A inferred resource of at least 25 million tons grading 1% LI2L. Uh, yeah, and that'll get us 100%. When, when we make all the payments, that'll get us to 100% of essentially the entire project itself. There's three different claim groups at play in that one big project group, but um, yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, I did see that Cisco dominated and then the other two were smaller. Their payments were pretty much up front, I think. Yeah, yeah, and that'll get us 100% of those two projects um, essentially next year. And then Cisco is more staggered and structured along a period of four years. And uh, how would you compare the available infrastructure at Cisco versus Mir? Cisco is 150 kilometers north of a town called Matagami in Quebec, and that's a historic mining town. Um, the railhead ends in metogamy. So we're literally, I would think, the closest route to infrastructure if we have an actual resource on the project. Um, there's talk of extending the railway all the way up the, along the Billy Diamond Highway. So, so that would be, you know, right there where we are. The actual Cisco project is 10 kilometers off the Billy Diamond Highway. So, you know, we're very close to infrastructure. Um, I believe the road intersects the project at some point as well. So we're right there. Okay, great. Um, you have some cash in the bank and the, some warrants I see that are expiring this year in December, which, uh, you know, should be exercised. If you look at the exploration commitment that you've got at Cisco and the further drilling you want to do at Mia is, is, uh, some flow through financing, again, uh, something that you would look to utilize. Absolutely. When you, when you do a flow through financing, it's, it's at a premium to what the market is. Um, if you do a charity flow through financing as well, that is at an even higher premium. So it would be less dilution for the company. And, um, you know, we are going to be needing to do a financing. It's just a matter of when, and ideally we'd like to, to keep. Neil and his team at Darius Geological working working lots during the summertime. As you mentioned, there's warrants that are coming due in December this year. They're at 30 and a half cents. So, so they're just in the money. But, you know, if our stock appreciates in value, then um, hopefully those all come in. And that's another $1.6 million of hard dollars that we could spend as well. Yeah, that's a good point because it is hard dollars. And how do you how how are you finding the flow through market? There was commentary it comes and goes. Is that still a strong and open market? I believe so at this point. Um I think everybody's waiting because the federal budget is coming down um next week or the week after. So some of the rules are changing, but I believe there will be flow through funds available. And uh Alicia, in terms of um, 
access and the ability to drill you know, throughout the year? How does that look at, at Cisco? We're, we're slightly restricted because there's a, a goose harvesting season, which runs from April 20th to about May 20th. And then there's also moose hunting or caribou season, which I believe is in September. Um, at least it was up at Mia. There was a, a moose hunting season that runs from mid-September to mid-October. Um, but drilling-wise, like, the project is accessible year-round. So it's just a matter of getting out there. You know, I would assume that in the winter time, similar to what we did with Mia, we took a break over Christmas, December, because that's when the weather starts to turn and gets really cold, you know, waiting for winter freeze up to get back out there and do some work in, in the actual winter time. Who um, would you guys use for your assay? I believe we use SGS right now, so I, I would assume that we're going to continue using SGS. So is it fair to say that Cisco is going to be your priority for this year and, and going forward? Is that, is that the project you're hoping to, to push through to production first? Cisco is going to be our priority definitely for this spring and summer. Um, you know, we did do drilling at Mia in the fall and the winter time, which we have assays coming on those. You know, I think we're all cognizant of the fact that Mia is going to take a lot more work to, to prove up a resource there, you know, by no means is, is Mia not going to be a priority. We're just going to be hitting Cisco harder right now. We do need to meet those exploration requirements of, I believe it was a million dollars in the first year. You know, that's our immediate concern is to do that and uh, see where that goes. We're also going to be going up to Mia and doing some more mapping and sampling. Um, as I mentioned, we only got literally two weeks Mia in September. So, you know, there's so much more ground up there to, to to walk on and to to sample. There's, you know, two other trends that we haven't even touched. And, um, you know, Cisco is also a, a huge project that we need to walk and map and sample. You know, I think we have a lot of work ahead of us and um, it'll be a busy year for us. Are you going to be expanding your team? We have the capability of expanding because we contract all of our geological services to Darush, um, and they can can grow or contract with us, which has been quite handy to have that accessibility with them. You know, a lot of them have worked at some of the other projects up in the area, so they have that experience in lithium and and you know knowing the ground and knowing the area. So that's been that's been a great bonus. Because when I I look to the um... The uh, courage at Cisco is, is substantial. There's a lot of ground you can. Yeah, um, I believe there's at least 10 kilometer uh, trend at Cisco that we, you know, that where they, where they drilled currently or last summer, that's, you know, that's going to be our main focus is, is where they, where they were last year and then continuing on, continuing on from there. You've done uh, quite extensive work on the Mia zone. Um, can Give us a summary of uh, what's planned there for 2024. At Mia for 2024, we're going to get back out there and do, like I said, more mapping sampling. We only had two weeks in September there to do as much as we possibly could at that point. So uh, we'll be getting back out there doing that. Um, we also have the Stellar Project, which is to the north of Mia, um, about six kilometers north. And we staked it right around the same time that we were acquiring Mia just for the, the fact that there was a greenstone belt that that it essentially sits on and covers. So last year, due to time constraints, due to the forest fires, we don't have any time to get there. So I think that'll be on the list of, you know, if we have a team of them, we'll just send them there to do some sound one. And uh, I noticed um, on the Mia there was an NSO uh, with um, Lizzie and Royalty in court, but it doesn't appear to be... Um, a royalty on uh, on Cisco is that potentially an option that you could explore to raise funding to assist with someone like Lithium Royalty Corp or, or a similar organization? Potentially, there there is a royalty on Mia, which is a one percent overall in favor of uh, Lithium Royalty. Um, there's also a an additional one percent on, I believe there's twenty eight claims there that's in favor of Frank Nevada, and that goes back to Mia historically being looked at as a gold project on the 
broad back portion of the Cisco project, there's a 3% NSR. On the Wugama portion of the Cisco project, there's a 3% NSR. And on the Cisco main part, there's a, a 4% NSR, but there's a path to get that NSR down to 1% across the board. So there is an NSR on it. It's just there's a path to get to 1% for us, which at that point, then we could turn around and, you know, sell an NSR to somebody at some point to raise money. So Alicia, in addition to the Cisco, and me, you, you, you touched on the Stella, your thoughts on, on, on the potential there and, and your plans for that project? The Stellar is like blue sky to us. Like it, it sits on a rainstorm belt up there. Um, the entire area where Stellar is, I don't believe has been really looked at over the past year, given the forest fires. Um, yeah, we essentially plan on getting back out there or getting there since we haven't actually been there and, and seeing what actually is there. There's, there's potential. We just don't know. And, and uh, you know, aside from the natural things like the forest fire and so on, Quebec ranks, I think it's eighth in the world in the Fraser Institute for mining friendliness. How have you found operating in Quebec, you know, your interactions with government and, and support and just generally um, access and, and staff and so on? Quebec has actually been, it's been a great province to work in. Um, they have a very supportive government and they have investment arms of the government that directly invest in companies and they want to talk to you. They want to know you. And, and if they can help out in any way, they're there and, you know, they're just an email or a phone call away. So Quebec's been very good to deal with. There's also the, the Cree nation of Wimengi that we've been dealing with for the past year on Mia. They've also been great. You know, they're very business minded and, um, any questions we have, we ask them. They were the ones who rented us the camp that we currently operate out of. And yeah, it's, it's been a really good experience working in Quebec. Hi, Alicia, uh, you mentioned Patriot, uh, but we, there was also news this week, you know, from Winsome Resources and, and the, um, you know, the diamond mine over there and an idea to possibly process, you know, other or um, as a, a long-term objective, just like if you make a discovery, I don't have the map in front of me, but like, what's your route to market right now? Arcadium, you know, has plans to, to build downstream, you know, Sayana and, and Piedmont have, you know, their mind, but nothing downstream. So like, like if you make a discovery, it is Spajami going to stay in the province, you know, how do you see the Quebec evolving and, and for, for the Cisco, you know, project and Mio project in particular, you know, what's the route to market? I would assume that it would stay in Quebec, Quebec and Ontario has been the, at the forefront of building the, the factories and the, you know, to, to process the materials in Quebec and Ontario. So I would assume I would say in Quebec, that's the easiest way, ideally. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a matter of, of seeing how far along they get and you can build all the, all the process and facilities you want, but if you don't have this, the, the feed to get to those facilities, it'll be interesting to see how, how things pan out the next couple of years. And then Alicia, uh, we've seen a lot of corporate transactions go on in Western Australia. It seems um, the, a couple of parties are, are very, uh, very much in favor of, of keeping it, uh, keeping it local. You, your thoughts on um, Canada and Quebec and potential consolidation in the region. You know, we had a lot of people rushing, they coming from all parts and now we're starting to see uh, the pack thinning out and, and, you know, the need for a meaningful deposit in order to progress and move forward. Your thoughts on, on consolidation potentially in, in certainly James Bay and, and in general. Absolutely. Um, as a board, we met in January and that was the topic of discussion, even in December with the way that markets, the lithium markets in particular, were the last quarter of last year with everything essentially cratering. Um, 
you know, there's a lot of projects, like you said, there's a lot of people that rushed out there and staked ground or bought ground at, you know, huge valuations. So it was already in our mind that there was going to be some consolidation happening or there's going to be some projects where that would potentially be really good projects to pick up this year. And um, essentially how we got Cisco was we were, we were starting to look already in, in November, December. Um, unfortunately, due to the forest fires, we weren't able to spend much of the money that we raised last year, which fortunately left us in a good position that we had cash. We have cash. Um, Neil has since spent a bunch of that cash because of the fact that he was drilling in the fall and winter year. But, um, you know, we still have a good cash position. So you know, moving forward, if... If there's other projects that come available, you know, it might be something we would consider, but it's, um, I think we're going to have our hands full in 2024 here with Cisco. Do you feel that in light of the, the forest fire and, you know, I guess the local government assessing some of the impacts and the risk of that, that, you know, more infrastructure to be able to move people in and out of the region will improve that, that that'll drive you know, government looking to to get more involved? Absolutely. There's an association called Look Around the Lines, and they're trying to open up the north more so and, you know, extend the train from Metogamy up north. Um, you know, there's all sorts of infrastructure ideas. And like Howard mentioned, you know, when some acquiring that that in mind, like, you know, they're going to need to build rooms. They're going to need to have the infrastructure in place to get the product to market or to get the product at least down to the port. Uh, yeah, I think I think in the next couple of years, the, the entire area might might ever go some change, just given the fact that, you know, there's there's lots of people out there and there's lots of work going on up there. They're going to have to, you know, build the infrastructure to, to keep things going. We, we've said a lot that, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, aluminum uh, refining in... Uh, Quebec, right? And uh, there should be a lot of lithium refining in Quebec as well for a lot of the same regions, but uh, they have to import the bauxite for the most part uh, or alumina. Uh, but I think there are like 11 or 12 smelters of, of aluminum in, uh, in Quebec. So Rio Tinto and uh, Alcoa. I think I have a lot of them. So anyway, it's going to be a very interesting time. That's where we're wearing our Canada Rocks hat, not the Rockstock Channel hat, you know, this time. Uh, for every time there was a uh, Canadian rock story. Anyway, thank you very much, Alicia, uh, for helping our audience get to know Q2 Metals and yourself. And uh, as a reminder to everybody, a, a, a one or two page write up summary of this will be in the Lithium Bowl. Uh, so again, go to the RK Equities website and register your email if you'd like to receive that directly. Until next time, Alicia. Happy Friday. Have a good weekend. You too. Thanks, guys.